Hey, what's up? This is Gary from Raz Rentals, and today I'm going to talk about the brand new NECA Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Racking and Vernon 2-Pack. Now, these started showing up in stores in January of 2021, and uh, unfortunately, I, I haven't been able to find it anywhere. It's now the end of March, and um, I couldn't find it in any stores, and I couldn't order it from Target.com. And I actually wrote NECA a message and said, you know, are you guys going to plan a pre-order for these things? And they wrote me back and said that... Uh, while these things will still continue to show up in stores, the production has ended. So I was just like, fine, I'm just going to have to get on eBay now before these, you know, go up even more. And, uh, you know, this was a little more expensive than buying it in store um, on Target, but, you know, it is what it is. And I feel bad for all those people that, you know, have to do this with every single release because it's such a cool line that, you know, it sucks that you're constantly getting price gouged to try to find these things. Like, come on. They should be available to everybody. You should either have pre-orders or they should just double the amounts. Maybe that would, wouldn't work out if, you know, if there'd be a ton of them on the shelves or something like that. But come on, we got to find a, a better balance here. And with that, let's get started here, all right? So on the front here, you can see that the packaging is the usual NECA cool packaging that looks kind of like the uh, the party van. You know, you got it. You got the uh, the green up top and the yellow on the bottom. Then you have a very nice window that shows your two action figures inside and most of the accessories. Now, you can't see his flute. It's hidden in here somewhere. So, And then on the front here, you got a very nice illustration of the Rat King and Vernon. That really captures Vernon's personality really well because in the cartoon, he's, he's a coward. And you just got a nice shot of the Rat King on the side. On the back, you got a very nice bigger picture of the Rat King and Vernon. And, uh, you know, you have a little bio here, but it's nothing specific to the Rat King or Vernon. It's just a generic Ninja Turtle bio. Down here, you have a couple past releases. It would have been cool if they would have thrown some of the newer ones on here, like the Ultimate Foot Soldier or the, uh, the Frog 2-Packs, but whatever. And just over here, you got another picture of Vernon. So, I'm going to open this guy up and, uh, you know see if anything needs warmed up, try to move this around without breaking anything, and I will get back to you in a little bit. Okay, so here's the guys out of their package with all of their accessories. And I'm going to discuss all their accessories and show how they look in the, in the cartoon so you can kind of compare them and see what's what. I'm also going to compare how the, the two guys actually look themselves. Uh, you know, sometimes with the cartoon, the Rat King kind of changes... Um, you know, he always has pretty much the same design, but sometimes his uh, scale or his proportions are a little different. So we'll take a look and see how things look. But uh, here's my first impressions. Right off the bat, I got to say that more most of their joints work exceptionally well. Like, they're not really tight. You know, they don't get stuck. I wasn't really fearing breaking any of them. It was, that was really, really nice. There's only two joints in uh, the Rat King's like his top knee joint, I was kind of having a little bit of trouble moving that. But other than that, everything moves like smooth and, and great. Same thing with Vernon. All his joints worked very good too. Now there are some spots on there where I'm a little worried about possibly breaking them just because they're small pegs and stuff like that. And you just have to be careful. Like trying to remove his arms to replace them with the rat arms is, you know... It's a little scary, especially when you can't uh, return these things or get any kind of replacements. And uh, uh, let's see, what's my next comment? Oh, yes. The other thing is, too, is that lots of times with the um, the NECA figures, you know, you have the joints and you have those little pins and stuff like that. And lots of times the colors of them will be very different than the body part they're connected to and they're painted that color, right? So as soon as you start to move them around, that paint will start to flake off. Now you do have a little bit of that flaky paint, but I think that they have matched the pins a little better than usual. So, you know, we'll get into that more when we get into the down into the figures a little more and get to paint, but that's my first impressions. All right, so let's start with the racking, and then I'm gonna work my way into Vernon. A lot of the racking's accessories um, kind of uh, inspire the Vernon accessories. So we'll start with the Rat King first. Um, like I said, you know, this, the body is actually really good on this. I really like all the stitching on it. I think that looks great. Um, I looked through all of the Rat King's appearances. In the cartoon, the Rat King appears in multiple episodes during season three. Um, he appears in two episodes during season four, one in season five, and then one in season seven and one in season eight. So he, Unlike a lot of other the Ninja Turtle villains, he actually shows up here and there pretty frequently. 
In my opinion, this racking figure looks kind of like a mix of the first appearance of the racking, which is Enter the Racking during season three, and he also kind of looks like a mix of the racking from Where uh, Where Rats from uh, Channel Six, which was during season four. Um, if you look at the the toy here, the proportions seem pretty pretty close to those. I mean, the biggest difference is sometimes he just appears a little more bulkier. But, you know, even in those episodes, he can change sizes from shot to shot. So it's never anything really um, super consistent other than the basic design of him. Every episode of the of the Rat King is very consistent with his costume. Like the, uh, you know, you have like this little, uh, you have this uh, wrap around his neck. You have the one going over here. It's diagonally on his stomach. You have one for the belt. You have like his uh, wrap diaper, and then you have the ones on the thighs, the ones on the legs, the ones by the ankles, and the ones on the feet. Like every single time, you know, you have the same ones on the arms. Every single episode he's on, he has that. One of the biggest differences is sometimes in the first episode, you have like a double wrap going around his nose. And then other than that, in season eight, when he shows up in the episode Wrath of the Rat King, uh, he's wearing a fedora and a, a trench coat. I mean, who does he think he is? Dark Man? So, to begin with, I gotta say, I really like the paint on this guy. I think he looks great. Um, there's only one spot that looks a little rough, and that's just this little worn part on top of his hair. Other than that, though, like, everything is very clean and crisp. Sometimes with NECA figures, you get wonky eyes, but this guy's eyes look great. Look at him. He's staring right into your soul. He recognizes the rat deep inside of you. Um, I really, you know, I love the... Uh, how you have like the black lines and then you have these fat stitches and you know each one of those is painted and it's painted very clean uh, same thing with on the pants down here that all looks good and i just really like the color of the the pants from the light green in the front to the dark green in the back like the cell shaded look um i think really makes this guy pop a lot i think uh you know in general he just looks fantastic and like like i said sometimes in in, in those episodes he appears a little more bulky than this figure, but in general, he still looks good. He still has kind of like this fat neck, and he still looks very muscular. Very different from the uh, the design of the original Rat King action figure. Like, that was one of those things where, like, you saw the toy, and he looked kind of monstrous, and then you looked at him in the cartoon, and he kind of just looks like a, like a, a muscle guy. And uh, what kind of clothes would you even call these? These are, like, bandage clothes or something like that. But, uh... I don't know. It looks very good. The only thing here, right? You have this one uh, wrap, this piece. It goes across diagonally over his torso and then comes back down here, right? And um, if you look at it on the back of the package, here you can see that this wrap is supposed to hold this flute piece. Like, you're supposed to stick it in there. And, uh, you know, I cannot get it to do that at all with this action figure. There's no, like, give here whatsoever. And there's actually a peg that's connected to this wrap that sticks in there, so you can't really move this around too much. Because on the back, right, it looks like there's a spot here. It looks like there's a, a little gap from where you're supposed to put that flute, unless you're supposed to stick it back here. But, you know, like, there isn't much give here to, to put it either. So, um, yeah, because you have it where that peg is right there attached to this, this wrap, you know, I cannot move it to try to even make a spot there to stick that flute in. So now I'm going to talk about the articulation on this guy and there's some pros and some cons to this dude. First of all, the, the, the articulation on him works very well. You know, it seems like ever since maybe the rock soldiers, the NECA figures don't, not including the loot crate ones because the loot crate ones were ridiculously stiff. But since the, the rock soldiers in the normal uh, cartoon line, their articulation has just been fantastic. It's been easy to use, and, you know, it hasn't been too stiff. You, you, you never really have to worry too much about breaking anything. Um, you know, very good. But um, uh, all I'll get to when I get to it. But uh, all right. So the head has a ball jointed. It's a ball joint for the head. Um, you can look all over the place. The torso here, I think it's a... Maybe it's a ball joint because you can rotate that all over the place and in every direction. Up here, you have a swivel and a hinge in the shoulder. You have a, a bicep cut, which is great. You have double jointed arms. And, uh, you know, sometimes I'm a little harsh on double jointed elbows and stuff like that. But uh, 
these ones seem to work pretty well. Um, you have a, a hinge and a and rotation at the wrist. You know, I got that backwards. Um, I'm not sure if I can't get his waist to rotate. So I don't know if you're supposed to do that. Um, now here is where some uh, problems occur. All right. His hips, I really like the way that NECA has been making these newer um, leg joints. I think that they're great. I love the system that they have where you have like, you have a ball joint, you have a ball in there, and then, you know, the, uh, the hip wraps around that ball so you can twist it. And then there's also a cut at the top of the, the thigh. So you kind of have a double rotation and it, you know, you can move it all over the place. I don't know how to really describe that, but that's the best I can do, right? <laughs> so, um, but here's the thing, right? This, uh, the pelvis piece here is like an overlay. It's a soft rubber overlay to hide whatever they're going to reuse now for every single character in this scale. But the problem is, is that the overlay, I think, comes over, comes up too far or too low so that it kind of stops the legs from bending far enough. Not only that, but I'm also getting, uh some wrinkles and cracks along the edge of this as I'm moving the leg up. So you're really going to have to only move it so far. And, you know, I don't know, you're probably not going to, like, make this guy sit down or anything like that. I guess you, I guess some of what the racking does is he does kind of sit on a throne sometimes. But, um, yeah, like, you're not going to be able to do that without possibly damaging this uh, soft rubber overlay. So that is no good. Down here at the bottom of the legs, uh, he's got double jointed knees and they work very well. Uh, well, the bottom ones have been working well. The top ones seem a little stiff and it doesn't, I don't know. You can get it, but it's just, you know, a little tricky. Um, this one, however, my bottom joint here of this, this leg is loose. I don't think it's completely wrapped around that peg. So I'm going to have, every time I'm turning this, I always have to squeeze it so it doesn't pop off of there. Um, and then down at the, uh, the ankles, you just have, uh, I don't think you have rotation. No, you just have a hinge and you have uh, ankle rockers. Uh, like the muscles and everything like that in the front and in the back. They just look great. And then, like, the stitches on here just look fantastic, too. Like, everything about it is great. Except, you know, I don't, I'm not too fond of these, like, the rubber, the rubber, like, you can feel that there's a lot of space there between the, uh, this wrap diaper and his actual pelvis inside. Um, but, uh, like, I'm not too fond of this, this soft rubber. Because I feel like this is something that will crack down the line or cause some problems. So, like, you know, you just got to be very careful with that. Not to mention, I don't know if that was just because this was painted and it rubbed up against that or what, but I got a little bit of a, a brown spot right there. Not the best place to have a brown spot. Um, but, yeah, even, like, the, bottom of his, the bottoms of his feet look great. I don't know. In general, he looks fantastic. I just have a few minor nitpicks. So, for the pegs, you know, sometimes NECA has them like kind of a weird color or a color that doesn't match like the hand or something like that. And then they'll paint on top of them the color that they need it to be. And then that paint will chip off and then you'll have this really kind of strange colored peg right there. But in this one, it seems like they match things pretty well. Like here in the wrists, the peg is actually the brown color. It's not the dark color, which is good. Um, you know, it just matches that. That's fine. Down here, um, this, this peg piece uh, between the ankle is actually the dark color green from the back. But uh, in the front, it's just not that noticeable. Like it's, I guess maybe because you have like the darker color on the stitches, it like looks in place. It, it's not jarring or anything like that. So that's good. So here's a quick little explanation of where this Rat King design comes from and how it evolved from the comic book to the, uh, the cartoon. And uh, eventually I plan on making like a, a full video on the 1989 Playmates Racking Action figure where I will go into a more depth um, biography of uh, the Racking. So first of all, the Racking first appeared in Tales of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles number four. And this was drawn by uh, Jim Lawson. So I'm pretty sure that 
Jim Lawson actually created this. I, like, I don't think that Kevin Eastman and Peter Laird told him to draw this. He kind of came up with this on his own. And, you know, obviously, uh, he's very similar to the final racking uh, look of the toy, but he's just, he's different. You know, he's more bald and there's like no color whatsoever in his outfit here. And, you know, even inside of here, so much, there's so much detail on him. And, um, Yeah, I highly suggest checking this comic out if you can. It's pretty awesome. The next year in 1989, we saw the first Racking action figure. And look at him. He looks awesome. Obviously, they made him more uh, kid appealing by giving him these cool colors and, um, you know, adding all these extra details like the bones, the centipede, the spiders, the rats. All that stuff is awesome. I always got like a, a way different feel from the uh, the Playmates action figure. He, to me, he always looked like a zombie. Or, or something like that, where the, like I said earlier, the uh, the racking is just kind of like a muscle dude in some ragged, stitched up clothings. They really changed the face a lot on this guy. I mean, come on. Look at his, his face almost looks like, looks like it's melting or something like that on the original one. Plus he has these spots of where his hair is ripped out. Um, the guy in the cartoon, he looks like if he didn't have those bandages on his face, like Irma would be chasing after him all the time. April too, probably. But yeah, like, so much of this stuff was translated fairly well, but, you know, in true cartoon fashion, they just kind of um, simplified a lot of it. Alright, so let's talk about the Racking's accessories. First, he has three soda pop bombs, and, uh, you know, these look very cool. They look very much like how they look in the cartoon. Uh, even the details on top of it are very nice. You have like, you can see the tab and everything like that. It looks like a soda can, you know, looks very, very cool. In the cartoon, the racking, uh, you know, he wears these around his belt and then he pulls them off and he throws them at the Ninja Turtles and they just explode. You know, there's, there's no difference between any of them. Most of the times he always throws a red one. He never uses the blue ones. Speaking of the Rat King's belt, here it is. It goes diagonally across his chest. And, uh, you know, it fits him very well. Maybe a little loose, but I don't know. It's okay. And uh, let's see here. The soda pop bombs go in there very nice, very easily. And they stay in place. Like, they're not going to fall out on you or anything like that. I mean, that looks great. It looks just like the racking. The Rat King comes with three different rats, and uh, one thing I like is that they all have different poses. They can all sit on him differently, which is pretty cool. It's not like, um, you know, I, a lot of times you'd think that they would just give him, like, the same three rats. and But no, they, they all have, even these ones that are, they look like they sit sort of similar, but they're actually pretty different. I really like how the, uh, the tails hook around him. I think that's pretty cool because you can try to fit them on top of his shoulders or around his arms or his hands. That's pretty cool. And, uh, you know, if you bought multiple Rat Kings, you could try to make them look like this. Next up, the Rat King comes with this awesome flute. The details on this are pretty great. Uh, I like it a lot. In the cartoon, there's some times where there's like an extra chamber up here at the top. So it's kind of missing that. Like it's a, I don't know, a little extra piece there or something like that and in the cartoon much like the Pied Piper the Rat King um, plays this flute in order to control his rat subjects in the first episode enter the Rat King he also uses the flute to control Splinter but by the middle of the episode Splinter breaks the the spell and later on when the Rat King tries to use it again Splinter is able to fight it off without any problems in the episode uh, where rats of channel <laughs> where rats from channel six you can have the Rat King hold the flute, but it's a little tricky trying to actually make it look like he's playing it. Like, I, I don't know. It's hard to, even with these double jointed elbows, it's kind of hard to match things up uh, appropriately. And uh, he can only hold it with this, with his uh, left hand. This is the only hand that the grip on it is small enough to hold this, but it's still a little loose. Kind of goes a little bit all over, but. The Rat King comes with a canister of ooze, and this is actually pretty cool because it's different than all the other canisters of ooze we've gotten so far. 
What's the difference? Well, you can actually open it up and inside you can see the ooze. And you might be wondering, why is it like kind of weird looking inside? Um, well, in the episode where rats from Channel 6, um, the Rat King comes across this canister of ooze in his domain. And it's something that like Shredder accidentally left there. And um, somehow the ooze became unstable. And that's why whenever he puts the ooze on Irma and Vernon and turns them into were-rats, um, they change back to humans eventually because... It's unstable and it doesn't stick. And then later on in the episode, the Rat King is able to turn them back into rats by playing his flutes. But uh, more on that a little bit later. You now you can see uh, the Rat King can hold this canister of ooze with this bigger hand. This uh, I don't know if you'd call this even a gripping hand. To me, it looks more like a uh, I'll get you kind of hand. But you can easily pop the canister right in there. The Rat King comes with five different hands. First, he has these like very big gripping hands like I showed you with the canister, or as I like to think of them, but I'll get you hands. He also comes with these uh, tighter gripping hands, but they are also different sizes. And on the left hand, you can use that to, uh... oh, come on. He can hold the flutes. And then on the, the right hand, He can hold his soda pop bomb. Look, I I don't know what the problem is. I of course I've had a, yeah I've had a few drinks, but I can still play this thing like a master. <laughs> the Rat King also comes with one pointing finger, and uh, this looks very nice too. You can get him into nice uh, intimidating pointing poses. I guess you could also try to make it look like he's petting his rats with one finger, but. I don't know, with a face like that, he looks like he's about ready to kill it. There is one accessory that uh, I think the Rat King should have had, but it wasn't included here, and that's the Rat King's bolas. In a decent amount of episodes, uh, the Rat King has these bolas, and he throws them to capture people. Uh, of course, you know, April O'Neil, because she's got to get captured. So here's a, a size or a scale comparison with the Rat King. Uh, now, you want the Rat King to tower above the Ninja Turtles, and actually in the cartoon, it's a little trickier trying to find shots of him with the turtles. Like, for whatever reason, like, their battles usually consist of him being a little far away from them. <laughs> and, like, he fights Splinter in, um, in Were Rats from Channel 6, but, like, most of the times, like, he'll just throw a bomb and then run away at the end of an episode or something like that, and, like, you hardly even see him. But you, you still want him to look intimidating next to the Ninja Turtles. So I do think that his uh, height is pretty good. And like, this is one of those things where maybe it'd be cooler if he was a little bulkier. Um, he, he's a pretty good size here next to April. And you do actually see him next to April a lot in the cartoon because, you know, she gets kidnapped a lot. Here he is next to the Shredder and Leatherhead. And uh, you, it might be hard to see it on screen here, but he actually is like a little bit taller than the Shredder, which I'm fine with. It's for me, like if I, even though you, you hardly ever... See, I don't even think you see him next to the Shredder ever. But um, I just kind of picture him to be a little bit taller and bulkier than the Shredder. And the Shredder being, you know, he's like a master of ninjutsu, but he's a, a little smaller in size. And um, yeah, I think that proportionately it looks okay. Like, obviously his muscles are a lot bigger than the Shredder's. Um, although his torso is roughly around the same size. And... Uh, you know, you have to see how he looks next to Leatherhead because, you know, in the first episode, well, not in the first episode, but you uh, have two team-ups, sort of, or crossovers with Leatherhead and the Rat King. First, you have Leatherhead meets the Rat King in season three, and um, in that episode, the Rat King kidnaps the Leatherhead, and at first he wants to force Leatherhead to help him defeat the Turtles or maybe do some kind of scheme or something like that. I can't remember exactly. But uh, Leatherhead breaks away, and then he tries to kill the Rat King by blowing him up with a bazooka. And that's a pretty cool episode. And then uh, later on, there's an episode in epi uh, Season 4 called Splinter Vanishes. And uh, in that episode, uh, Leatherhead and Rat King are actually working together. Um, you know, they're actually a team, and they're trying to make these robots. Robot rats and robot crocodile alligators or crocodiles. I don't know, it's kind of weird, but it's okay. 
All right, and now before I get into the full Vernon review, let's talk about these cool uh, rat, wear rat Vernon pieces that uh, are included here. Um, now, I mentioned before that the Rat King turns Vernon and Irma into these wear rat people using his canister of unstable ooze, right? And um, so you may be wondering, why would he do that? Why would he turn Irma and Vernon into rat people? You might think that with a name like Wear Rats from Channel 6, that he probably did it because he's trying to turn everybody in the whole building into rats. Like he's trying to make a mutant population of rats that he can control with his flute, right? Uh, no. He turns them into rat people because he wants to use his flute to make them up, uh, go up to the surface from the sewers and find him food. That's it. He just wants them to find food for him. The Rat King in the cartoon sure is different than the one in the comic book. In the comic book, he's more mysterious and there's like a... You know, you don't know if he's like a, a spirit or like a, a monster at first. And like, I don't know, there's lots of cool things going on with the Rat King in the comic books. In the, in the cartoon, uh, you, he can be intimidating, but he's also a little goofy. So Vernon and Irma go up to the surface and they try to find food for the Rat King. And uh, when they run into a bunch of cats, they turn back into humans. It doesn't really explain if it's because of fear or what, but they just turn into humans. So then they go back to Channel 6 and um, the Rat King learns that they're back at Channel 6 and that they're human. So he decides to go to Channel 6 and he plays his flute there. And that turns them back into rats. So now Irma and Vernon are back under the Rat King spell. And, you know, a bunch of stuff happens. Uh, I don't remember. But at the end of the episode, Vernon and Irma are on an airplane and they're rat people. And they're, you know, fighting. The Mitch Turtles are fighting people up in Rock City. It's a whole big thing. Anyways... So what happens, though, is the turtles and Vernon and Irma fall out of the airplane, and in one frame, they're rat people still, and then in the next frame, they're humans. And it doesn't explain how they turned into humans or anything like that. But by the end of the, the episode, Splinter breaks the Rat King's flute, so, like, the Ninja Turtles say that, oh, well, like, because the flute is broken, they'll never turn back into rat people again. Why? Like, nothing... Nothing else could set them off with this unstable ooze. Like, come on, give me something here. So coming back now to Vernon's uh, extra accessories, his extra body parts. Um, you know, I think this looks really awesome. I love the fur on the, the hands and the arms and just the head. It all looks really, really good. And um, like the the forearm connects to this part where the, where the sleeve is rolled up. And... Um, the neck up here just connects to, like, where your collarbone is, like, the base of your neck. And, you know, I really like the look on this guy's face. Like, he's really given, like, a, almost like a, like a, a mindless stare, like he's a zombie. Or he's being enslaved by the Rat King to go find some cheese and stuff. And what I really like about it, too, is that you can actually open up the mouth to make it, you know, he could either be talking or he looks even more crazed. And uh, there's a piece of, there's a point of articulation right underneath the head. And you know, you know, when you had figures like Leatherhead, you would open up his mouth to a certain point and you could actually see the neck underneath, which is kind of uh, a bummer. But on this thing, the way that the head is set up, the, how far the mouth opens up, you don't see any brown from the neck. You only see the mouth. And if you look straight up, like, uh, of course, if you look all the way up here, you can see that red, but you won't. You'll just probably have it around here. And it'll be fine. Like, it's it's hidden really well, so that's good. Um, I also think it's hilarious that, like, it kind of looks like he has a mustache. Even though Vernon doesn't have a mustache, it just looks like he has, like, a a very mussy, a very messy mustache on his face. And, um, so yeah, it's, it's a very cool looking design. Now, putting this head on here was actually a pain in the neck, because, um, this is like a you have a joint up here in the neck, and then you're trying to connect it down here. And then the ball down here that you connect it to has a joint underneath that. So, like, when you're trying to push it into place, like, that ball is just being pushed all over the place. And it's hard to line it up correctly. So, oh my gosh. I promise I won't try to break it this time, I swear. So, um, yeah, like, you're trying to push the head on here, and this piece is just moving all over the place. And it's... It's tricky, you know? It's a little tricky. Um, the human head is actually a lot easier to put on than the rat head. Maybe it's... I don't know why. 
No, what is up? See, this is... See that? It gets pushed, pushed to the side. On. There we go. Not that bad, but all right. Now the arms, you have to pull them out. And this is what I said earlier. It's like, you're kind of worried a little bit about pulling this off of here because the pegs are so small. Um, it has a good grip, but it doesn't, they, they do feel sturdy. I will say that they don't feel like soft plastic or anything like that, but just Popping that off, it's just, I don't know. Come on. Oh my god. <laughs> Oops. Okay. And here he is in his human form, all put together and away from the lights so I won't knock them over. Um, here's Vernon Fenwick. And this looks great. You know, when I saw this, I saw the, the tie like sticking straight down and I was like, well, that's, I don't know about the tie sticking down like that. But if you watch the cartoon, his tie is always sticking down like that. And just everything about this guy looks just like Vernon. Like it, it's perfect. The colors look great. Um, the proportions of the face are fantastic. Like, it looks just like him, and I think that the look, the expression on the face is just perfectly Vernon. Like, obviously, a lot of times he's a coward, but he's also like a, a stuck-up, smarmy man, and, you know, you just want to smack him. So everything on this guy just looks great, you know, and I, I'm most likely, I will probably just um, display him in his human form. I probably won't uh, really ever put him in his were-rat form, but it is cool to have it, but... I don't know, it's just, I'll probably just have him like this next to April or something like that. And, um, um, and you know, he's got the suspenders and I don't know. It looks great. Vernon, uh, first appeared in the first episode, Turtle Tracks. Before that, he didn't exist in the comic books or anything like that. He was made specifically for the cartoon. And, uh, you know, sometimes he tries to sideline April and take over as the news anchor. And sometimes he's just her cameraman. But... You know, I, like I said, I feel like the look on this guy just perfectly captures this character from the cartoon. And uh, did you know the guy who plays Vernon's voice is the same guy that plays Splinter's voice? Crazy. All right, so if we look at the articulation on Vernon, uh, he's got like a double-jointed neck here because you have the joint down here and you have the joint up here. And, uh, yeah, I mean, it works well. The head up top, it's kind of hard to move it around. And uh, sometimes when I first got this, like the neck was at, in the wrong place, but you need to find the Adam's apple and match up the top of it with that. Um, the shoulders have rotation and they have a hinge. Um, he has double jointed elbows, but unlike the Rat King and some other figures with double jointed elbows, I feel like these are very strange. So I usually just kind of uh, bend them at the lower joint. Like once you start doing this with his arm, then it just kind of starts looking like a Play-Doh or something like that. So I would just prefer to keep it like this. Um, so you have double jointed elbows and they both have both sides. You're able to rotate them and they have a hinge. Um, and then the sleeves are like an, an extra piece here that's uh, around that little peg inside of there. You, know, you can rotate the sleeve and you can rotate the forearm. Um, and you can rotate the wrist, and there's a hinge in the wrist. Now, he wears a, a wrist watch. I would say be careful with this, because you don't want to accidentally snap that off of there. Um, he's got, like, a ball joint, I think, in here. That's where it feels like. But when you when you lift up his, his torso too far, you can start to see a stomach under there. So that kind of ruins the, um, you know, him having his shirt tucked in with suspenders on. So most likely you're not going to move him around too much. Um, he has the same kind of uh, uh, hip articulation that, um, or pelvis articulation that the Rat King has, where you have the ball joint in there, and then you have the, the leg connected on top of that, and you have another 
piece connected on top of that. So you can, you have like double rotation and you can rotate it in every direction. Luckily, the, um, you have like a, a rubber overlay for the, the pelvis here. And luckily that's not cracking or anything like that yet. So that is good. Um, his shirt is actually a rubber overlay too. I didn't mention that, but like there, you can feel the hard plastic underneath and this is just a piece of rubber on top. He's got double jointed knees and um, they work very well too. And down at the bottom, you have a hinge for the ankle and you don't have any rotation, but you do have ankle rockers. I like his cool sneakers. Okay, so the, the main accessory that Vernon has after the wear wrap pieces is this very cool Channel 6 news camera. Um, the details on this are just fantastic. Like even the little paint on there to try to make it look like the screen is glass. Even in there, in the little eyepiece, you can have, there's a little tiny piece of white uh, gloss. So that's cool. The 6 looks very nice. Um, the handle moves around like this. The only thing that kind of worries me a little bit is this little rod that sticks out the side. I would imagine that this would be easy to break. So I'm going to try to figure out how to um, be very careful with that. Be very careful. Um, and just like the lens and everything. I don't know. This, this looks really great. And I found this uh, camera in the cartoon. I'm pretty sure that they probably show it multiple times. But... Um, it does show up in the end of the episode Leatherhead Meets the Racking, and there it is. Um, and here's the toy again, just so you can get a little bit of a comparison. They should have included a, uh, a lens cover. So if you want to line this up so it actually looks like he's filming something, um, you pretty much have to put it about here, and you can put that little eyepiece up in his eye. Like, I can't... I guess... I don't know. I thought that maybe this would have to rest on the shoulder or something like that. This little piece down here. But no. You can't line it up that way. So just like the Rat King, Vernon has five hands. And they're pretty much the same sort of deal, too. Where you have a, a set of gripping hands. So you can grab onto your camera. You got a very nice pointing finger. And you have one set of please don't hurt me, hands. Um, and one thing you should know is that the uh, the wristwatch is removable off of this hand, so you can, if you wanted to, you can put the wristwatch onto these hands and switch it up whenever you want. Here's a human comparison of all the, uh, the humans in the line, and they all look pretty good, except for April. <laughs> April's got some problems. Um, her torso is just way too small, like... You know, they could have made her a little taller by by making that torso. They should have filled it out and just made the proportions a little better here. It's way too thin, and uh, I don't know. She just looks way too small compared to the other ones. And plus, she's got no neck, and her head is huge. Like, her head matches in well with the other guys, but I don't know. That upper torso just needed some work. Um, and, uh, you know, maybe Casey Jones' head. His, his head might be a little too big. But other than that... You know, everything looks fine. You know, they're all, it, it's its cool because they all have completely different designs, but they all look like they're from the same universe. Maybe some of it's because of the black outline on all of them, or maybe it's just because they all, you know, they all fit really well in that Ninja Turtle universe. Just like April, never helping out and always getting her scoop. You know, with the uh, addition of Vernon here in the Rat King, it's just like, it's so awesome how this neck line is just filling out. And you're, you're just getting so many awesome possibilities. Like with the Splinter and Baxter set with all those accessories and the Krang set. Like everything that's been coming out is just amazing. Like this is really turning into quite possibly one of my favorite toy lines of all time. <laughs> you know, obviously the original Playmates Ninja Turtles might not ever be topped. But this one is doing a damn good job of, you know, rising to the occasion here. So... Thanks for watching. Let me know what you think. Did you luck out and find this at your Target? You know, I never even found any of those restocks either. Like, they have, they were putting out more Triceraton Infantrymans and Roadkill Rodneys and uh, the other two Triceratons and all that stuff. And I never found anything. So, you know, how'd you do? Talk to you later.